It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Z Garcia. Hey everybody, today I'm going to be taking a look at this tiny little game called Azuki Castle. In this one, you are going to be mostly gathering goods, turning those goods around for victory points, or gathering soldiers and preparing those soldiers for when a battle occurs. Uh, that sounds like a very epic feel, but well, as you can tell from the size of the box, it's a pretty small game, and I think it feels like a small game, but instead of just telling you how it feels, let me show you how it works, then we'll come on back and I'll tell you my thoughts on the game. The game's going to be played over at least 12 rounds, possibly more, and at the end of the whole game, whoever has the most victory points on the victory point tracker here is going to be the winner of the whole thing. Uh, each uh, round goes like this. It's going to have a few different steps. The first step is receiving action cards. In this case, I'm looking at a game here with three players, hence the three colors. And the star player tile is up here by yellow. So we flip over three cards, and then the yellow player is going to take one. These three are basically the same style card. Each one is going to give you one of the various goods in the game that are the matching colors right here, okay? So, yellow is going to take uh, that one. It doesn't really matter right now, since they don't have anything at all. And then we flip over a new one for the next player who will take one. Flip over a new one for the next player after that. This card here allows you to trade one cube for a different kind. Or trade two cubes for one of these tokens. Or one of these extra workers, which I'll get to in just one second. So they don't have any goods at all, so they'll take one of these as well. And we continue doing this until everyone has taken twice. All right. So we'll do that, and then lastly, uh, we have a soldier who came up here, so I'll take that for the sake of the explanation. The last two cards are simply discarded. Now, starting from the player that again has the star player token, they're going to deploy their workers. You start with two of your own, you might have more if, if I showed you, you get any of these uh, uh, generic ones. And so I put them on my cards there and I generate whatever they give me, in this case, I get the one black cube, I get the one brown cube, that's it. Next player over here is going to do something very similar and they'll get their two cubes. And this player over here is going to do the same thing, uh, getting the brown cube and deploying a soldier, which might do something depending on what the next uh, card flipped is, which is the event phase. So we've gone through the receiving action phase and the actually triggering actions phase. Now we go to the event phase where we flip over a card from this shuffle deck of 12 actions and there's a few different kinds. So we flip over one and indeed it is war and down here it tells you what happens. In this case, whichever player has no soldiers prepped and ready to go is going to lose two victory points. It won't matter the first round because, well, there's no points to lose. And anybody who did deploy soldiers would get some victory points. In this case, this player right here is going to make one victory point and so we'll move them up on the tracker all right once that's done this is discarded we clean all this up and we go to the next round if this card had not been a soldier a war card then this card the soldier card would stay in front of that player so they the all the cards will be cleaned away except for soldiers that you triggered and didn't need to be or soldiers you did not trigger at all that's, that, that would also stick around. So in this case, everything does get cleaned away though. So all of these cards are going to go away. And everybody gets their little workers back. We discard this round card. And we move this over to the next player who again begins the next round by flipping over some cards and starting to take some actions. That's pretty much it. And you have by now seen basically everything that is in this deck, all right? They give you the three kinds of goods. You can trade them, two for a coin or a pawn, one for one, or the soldiers. That's, that's it for what's in here. So let's set this aside for a moment. Let's set these aside for a moment. The other things that you have not seen are in this deck. You've already seen one soldier card, 
and the other ones are these construction cards and these cards here. And the way these work, you've already seen the soldiering card, the, the war card, that's uh, pretty straightforward. This card here, the construction card, when that gets flipped up, if a player has a set of goods, meaning one of each, like so, they can trade those in for three victory points, or you can give up one of your generic pawns that you've earned earlier in the game for two victory points. And then this card is going to stay face up instead of face down if anyone has made points off of it. And this is a clock in the game. Uh, once we've gone through all 12 original rounds, first rounds, if all four of these are face up, meaning points have been made from all four, game's over. If not, let's say only three of them made points and at, one, at, at some point in the game one came up and no one was ready to utilize it, well then we're going to shuffle that one and the other events back up again and continue going through them until that one has made points for someone, okay? That's how those work. And then finally this one, very easy, you're going to give up one of these coins, if you have one, for two victory points. Uh, as a, it's an honor, it's a, you know, like a, an offer you are making. So that's basically it. Assuming this had come up second and this player had all three of these, well then they would jump up one, two, three points in the scoring. And the scoring, as you can tell, it's always going to be pretty much that, that tight. It's, it's very, very close because everything is two or three points. Uh, you know, one, two, three is, is basically everything. So that's it. You just continue doing that, flipping these up, hoping you guessed right when the soldiers come up. Uh, trying to get your sets ready to go, but, you know, again, you don't know when these actions are, are going to appear, so you just hope to prepare the best you can, and, and the soldiers, yeah, gather them, but, you know, when you trigger them is also a big deal. That should give you an idea of how this works. Gather this stuff, turn it into points, basically. Let's go back up top, let me tell you what I thought of it. I can certainly appreciate when games are streamlined. In fact, I, one of the things I dislike the most in in larger sort of epic feeling games is that they have too much in there. And I often find myself thinking they could have streamlined some of this away. Now, on the other, you know, on the flip side of that argument, some games are so streamlined that you often will find yourself feeling like they streamlined the, the gameplay and unfortunately the fun right out of it. This one kind of lands in that category. You are, the, the things you are doing in the game lack the ability to generate excitement, you know. About the most exciting thing in this game is you guessing on soldiers and then, haha, in fact there is a war. Here's a couple of victory points, you know. And that's it, really. Uh, and so, and then the game play is, there's so little, that everything, every possible uh, uh, flashy moment has been streamlined out of this experience to the point that it simply fails to to engage me, you know? Uh, the game works, you know, it's not broken, but it's so... Everything is, as I said, one or two points. Everything is so clean that it's sterile, you know? And so it just, it, it's it's gone. I, I immediately forget about it after I finish playing, you know. There's nothing here that is memorable, unfortunately. And that's, that's just how I feel about the whole experience, really. Maybe you'll enjoy this if you are a big, big fan of maybe games with elegance. I, 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 find, I have a hard time calling this game elegant, though. It's not elegant, it's just simplistic you know there is a a lack of interesting options here because everything has been sort of left on the cutting room floor i can imagine or or it was never here in the first place so that's that's sort of how i feel about the whole thing if they had a little something more going on then maybe i'd like it but as it is right now you grab some cubes and turn them in for other cubes or victory points and then someone wins and they win by one point. That you will pretty much have scores that are that tight. Which leads me to believe that it's like, well, if the scores are that tight, 
and it's a push your luck with the flipping of the top event card, then just somebody just sort of wins, you know? There's not a... I did not outsmart you. So that's kind of how I feel about this one. Not really one I would recommend. I'm not sure I see who this would be for, really, because the folks that enjoy the Euro-style mechanisms of gathering, selling for points, there's not enough here to keep you engaged past maybe one exploratory play, you know? So I would say you can safely skip this one. That is Azuki Castle. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.